Yeah. Had a question. Yeah. You had a question. Yeah. What's up? It's um. You you trying to leave, but you got a question. Yeah. It's, it's Judah, the same tribe as um the Africans. Is did, did Jesus come from the same? Is Judah the same tribe? Probably the same tribe as Africa. Like it's all the same. Is is Judah the same as Afri Africans? Yeah, like yeah, is it all the same tribe? Come over here, check this out for me. Somebody get that, Joseph, get that Zonovan real quick. Pull up hand for me. Yes, sir. I got that for you. All right. You see the sign right here? Mm -hmm. So Judah is the biblical name of one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? In the modern day, the people from the tribe of Judah are called African Americans. Yeah. All right? So one thing I want to clarify for you is what they taught us in school is that uh, Africans sold their own people into slavery. That's what we're taught, right? That was a lie. Africans did not sell their own people into slavery. Hold, hold it for a minute. I ain't gonna get there yet. I'm gonna work my way up to it. Yes, go to uh, go to Amos. No, go to Joel chapter two. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what happened was Africans, or biblically they're called Hamites, sold Israelites, which look the same in complexion, but we have different ancestors. You follow that? Yeah. We look the same, we're both black, but the Africans have an ancient ancestor that's different from our ancient ancestor. And if you go back even further than that, the first man that was ever created, Adam, that you read about in Genesis, was made from the dust of the what? The dust of the earth. Do we not, somebody give me us uh, uh, second Ezra, come on up. Second Ezra six, put that down, give me second Ezra six. We all come from Adam, you know what I want? All right, last couple of verses. Speed up for me now. Speed up. Oh, you, my brother here can get it for me if you want. Okay, so everybody descended from Adam, right? So if Adam was black, what does that say about everybody that descended from him? Black. Everybody else was black. So we talked about the Moabites earlier. Yeah. They were what? Black. We talked about the Israelites, of course. They were what? Black. black. The Africans, which are the Hamites, were what? Okay, so we don't even read about a white person being introduced to the earth until Genesis chapter 25. After everybody else is already on the earth for a long period of time. So they didn't write about everybody in the Bible. There's no way. They didn't write about every. There's no way they could have touched on everybody that was on the earth then and wrote about it in the Bible. No, every, everybody that was on the earth is... Absolutely. 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 Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. So the origin, remember the, the word Genesis means beginning. So the beginning of every race that you hear about in the earth today, you read about in the book of Genesis. But I wanted to prove that point that I said everybody's from Adam. Bring that up. Yes, sir. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. Uh -huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, uh -huh. of him come we all. So the, the scriptures tell us plainly that we all come from Adam. Read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So everybody on this earth descends from Adam, but God made a distinction and he chose one particular nation of people. And that's the nation of Israel. That's the nation of people that you and I descend from. All of my brothers and sisters over there descend from. Everybody in the projects descends from the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, when we get to, uh, we fast forward up, let's go ahead and bring that up. Yeah, definitely take a picture of that. Definitely take a picture of that. So my young brother right here asks, do we come from the same people as the Africans? All right, so check this out. This is, uh, uh, tell them what we read. This Compact Bible Dictionary, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay, check this out. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. So we all remember that story, right? The Lord flooded the earth, killed everybody except for Noah and his three sons. So Ham is the youngest of the three sons. Read. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh -huh. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. So the eight people were Noah, his wife, his three sons, that... That's three plus another three, six, and uh, their wives. Eight people, read. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So at that particular point in time, uh, he became the progenitor of what we know today as the dark races, read. Not the Negroes. Not who? Not the Negroes. You see that? So the scholars know that the origins of the African people are different than the origins of the Negro people. Did y'all check? Did y'all peep that? Yeah. Read that part again. Not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. So even when you look at the old slave signs, 
Did it say, uh, do we got one up here? The old, you see that sign down here at the bottom? What does it say? It says a cargo of 94 prime healthy what? Negroes. Why didn't it say Africans? Why didn't it say, y'all help me out. Why didn't it say Africans? Africans are different from us. Exactly. Because the white man that was selling us at the slave markets knew they weren't selling Africans. They were selling Negroes. It's not a coincidence that the same scholars that tell us that the Negroes don't descend from Africans descend from the same people that made those signs at the slave markets that said Negroes for sale. So we were already over here. Some of us were already over here. The, tri the northern kingdom of Israel was already over here. You know how you hear about the Native American Indians, the Taino Indians, the so-called Puerto Ricans, all these people that were on the islands. They are our people. They were already here. But us, the people that come from the top of this sign, mm -hmm. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, we were brought here in the 1600s. We were brought here on slave ships in the 1600s. Now give me Joel. You get that? Yes, sir. Y'all check this out. So, so check this history out. So I'm, I'm reading you a scholarly source, but I'm going to show you that the Bible stated this long before the white man ever said it in the Zondervan. Check this out. You can fall back. Yes, sir. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. Uh huh. And they have cast lots. Joel, this is in the Old Testament, in the Bible. We're still in the Bible. Read that. Verse 3, uh -huh. and they have cast lots for my people, uh -huh. and have given a boy for an harlot, Read. and so they girl for wine, that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? So Tyree and Zidon were descendants of the people that you asked about, descendants of the African tribes, the African nations. These are the people that sold these other blacks into slavery. The Africans, or the Hamites, sold the Israelites into slavery to the so-called white men. It wasn't Africans selling their own people. That's a lie to keep you confused, to make you think that you're African. Right. Remember, the whole point is for you not to wake up and remember who you are as an Israelite. No, none of the nations can continue ruling over us and this earth as long as you know that you're an Israelite. Right. For them to continue ruling over you, you got to think that you're what? A Negro. A Negro or, or what? African. Or an African or an African American or a black. Any of these terms outside of the Bible, if you identify yourself with these things, that's what keeps them owning that store. So what do y'all check on an application? What do you write? Israelite. Nah, no, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, we don't write Israelite. Now, now I'll, I'll check black because that's the only category that our people as associate with. But I have the understanding that black is a color, not a nationality, and I'm one of God's chosen people. What's the curse that we got on us, like um, Judah? What's the, what's the curse that God put on us? I got you, I got you. Let me finish your first question, and then I got you. Finish that up. Verse 4, uh -huh. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, uh -huh. and all the coast of Palestine? Palestine, that's what you first mentioned when you first came up. Remember you was talking about the more, more science, and we explained to you that we fell into slavery, and what you don't know, you may not know, is that this right here is what they call the mid-Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade. But there was a slave trade that happened before that. So this is when the Africans sold us to the white man as slaves. But before this time frame, the Arabs, the Arabs took us as slaves and sold us as well. So the same way we learned Christianity from the white man when we were sold as slaves, what do you think we learned from the Arab man when we became his slaves? Islam, Islam, we became Muslims. So when we were Israelites, before this time frame, practicing Islam, what did they call us? Moors. Right. Moors. So these same people were slaves to the Arabs, calling ourselves Moors, the same way that we became slaves to the white man, and we call ourselves what? Christians, or black, or African American. What do y'all call that? Israelite. We're, yeah, we're God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. I'm an Israelite. You, if you ask me what's my nationality, my response to you is I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right, so if I ask you what's your nationality, what should you say? Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right, there you go. That's right. There you go. Let me finish this up. Oh, excuse me, verse 4. 
Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidar, and all the coast of Palestine? Verse 5. Verse 5. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, uh -huh. and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Uh -huh. The children also of Judah. The children of Judah. That's, that's your son, right? Yeah. So, so he was asking about what happened to the children of Judah. But he distracted right now. Check this out. Hey, hey bro, you, you asked about the curse that was on the children of Judah. Read. Hey, look, you asked about what happened to the children of Judah, right? Yeah, no, um, the curse yeah, That's on us to this day. I got you. This is leading up to it. Read. Verse 5. Uh -huh. Because ye have taken my silver. Verse 6. Verse six the children also of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Jerusalem uh -huh. have ye sold unto the Grecians. So the Bible prophesied right there that the... Africans would sell the Israelites, the children of Judah and Jerusalem, to who? The white people. To the Grecians, exactly. Who are the Greeks? White the white people. people. The white people. So we understand through the Bible that the people who sold us into slavery were not our own people. They were the Hamites. They were the Africans that we are not. Give me the last one in Exodus and then I'm going to come to your next question, all right? All right? You got Exodus, was it 11 and 7? Yes, sir. All right, read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. Now, this oh. verse here clarifies the confusion on us thinking that we're African. Read. But against any of the children of Israel uh -huh. shall not a dog move his tongue. These dogs are the other nations. We're God's children. To, to the most high, these other nations are dogs. They like spit to him. They don't, he, God doesn't care about them. Read or tongue against man or beast, uh -huh. that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. That's right. So the Lord says he puts a difference between the Egyptians and Israel, but what is that difference? Is it our complexion? No. The difference is God's laws. That's right. The difference is God's laws. Give me Exodus chapter 4. Because Moses was a uh, an Israelite, right? And you remember Moses got sent down the river by his mother? Yeah. And then... So they won't kill him. So they wouldn't kill him. Yeah. And he was raised by who? The enemy, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Now how would it, how would it look if uh, Pharaoh was a black man and then Moses was a white man? It would look kind of strange, right? It would be a, a weird looking household. But the Lord put a difference between us. It's proven that it wasn't his complexion because the Egyptians and the Israelites look the exact same. Somebody else get that for me in Matthew when Christ went to uh, went to Egypt. You get that? Yes, no, when they said it an Egyptian. Okay. All right. Well, we'll drop that. Your, your next question was about our condition to this day. Yeah. I'm about to say I'll do it next time we come out here. I'll Okay, my sister, you understand the difference between, you understand that you're an Israelite? You understand why mm -hmm. uh, you're not a Moor? And even if you subscribe to Moor science, your nationality is still an Israelite? You understand that? They're not saying it's Moor science. They're just saying it's Moor. Like, they, they have these teachings on Saturday night that go to the wee hours in the morning uh -huh. on Zoom. And they try to tell us our rights that we don't know about like we really have rights over here like we we the first they say that the moors which is the black people we are the government they say look on the back of a dollar bill and on the left hand side that's the moorish sign they don't have nothing to do with the united states government that's what they teach you but whose face is in the middle of that building your oppressor your yeah. oppressor Give me Lamentations uh, 4 and 17. I know, I know y'all trying to leave. I know y'all trying to leave. My man that got in the car, he ready to dip out. He done turned the car on for you. He done turned the car on for you. Somebody give me uh, Mark chapter 4 real quick. Go ahead, bring that up. Bring this up. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. So the scripture says that our eyes have failed for vain help. No matter what we try to do in this society, separating ourselves from the society, you know, becoming sovereign, the scriptures say all of those things that claim to help us are vain. I mean, they don't do us any good. You doing all that thing, all those things in vain. My brother explained earlier that you go through all that process, but you still got to get your gas from your oppressor, right. which is a curse according to the scriptures. When we're no longer, when we're truly sovereign, we don't have to go to our oppressors for anything. That's right. We don't have to go to our oppressors to ask to be free. Right. 
when we're really free, we're going to take our kingdom back. That's right. We're going to take it. We're not going to fill out an application to get his approval. No, we're taking it. Right. Get that for me in Daniel 7, where we're going to take the kingdom. Read that. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. Uh -huh. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So no matter what we do, the scriptures tell us we've watched. We've gone to get permission from, we fill our applications for a nation that cannot save us. So if you go out and call yourself a Moor, at the end of the day, it's still not going to save you. The only thing that's going to save you is you repenting from your life of sin, taking the pants off, putting the dress on, and the fringes on. Uh, you can't find that? Give me a second that's just not. Save by the way. Let's right, so get that real quick. The only thing that's going to save you is you repenting from your life of sin and returning back to the commandments. I'm going to give you that one and then I'll let you go, all right? That's the last one. I'll give you that one. Now you got to pick up yourself. You got 2nd Ezra 9? Like verse 4? Yes, sir. Bring it up. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 4. Bring it up! Then shall thy well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, uh -huh. even from the beginning. For uh -huh. like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So the end is going to be manifested here soon. America is going to be destroyed. So whether you stop, no, it's, it's not, not. The destruction that the Bible talks about, yeah, thermonuclear fire. And if you sovereign and you breaking God's commandments, you're going to burn the hell up in that fire too. Give me Amos 9 and 11. You got what I want? 9 and 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. So sister, the point that I'm making, if you're, if you're a Moor, if you're an Israelite, it don't matter if you're calling yourself Moor, if you're sovereign, if you're living in the hood, if you're living in the suburbs, if you're still in the midst of sin when Christ returns, read. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, uh -huh. which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. See, these people think that the evil isn't going to overtake them because they've become sovereign. They filled out an application to get freedom from massa. But your real master, Jesus Christ, said that you must stop sinning. Right. You must stop breaking God's commandments. And that is the only way that you'll become free. You got that for me? Yes, sir. Check this out, sis. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Verse 6. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works. So when you read about the book of Genesis and the creation account, all of these things were wonderful things. Many different signs. Read. And endings in effects and signs. So us being out here on the street is the effects and signs. The COVID-19 is the effects and signs. Right. The, the floods, the monsoons, all of these things are the effects and signs right. of the end of the world. Read. And everyone that shall be saved. So if you want to be saved from this destruction that's coming, remember we just read about the sword. If you want to be saved from that, read. And shall be able to escape by his works. By your works. The only way that you're going to be able to escape the destruction coming to this place is by your works. Right. So God told you he wants you to dress a particular way. Those are your works. Bring it out. Either good works or evil works. New Testament or Old Testament? The way he's talking about dressing. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. That's in the new... We do. We live by the new and the old. We live by the new and the old. You going to finish that up? Verse 7. Yo, y'all messing me all up. We was in the middle of a scripture. 2nd Ezra 9 and verse 7. Yes, sir. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works uh -huh. and by faith whereby ye have believed. All right, so the only way that you're going to be saved is through your works. So you asked a great question. And that's the question that most Christians have in their mind is... Okay, well, the port was the Old Testament, and Christ came, now we're in the New Testament. We're under grace. Not by works alone. Not by works alone. Yeah. Give me, give me James 4. Give, give me James 4. Who got it? James chapter 4. Not works alone. So if you put the fringes on your clothes, and you put the dress on, but you still believe that Jesus Christ looks like this, are you going to be saved? No. No, because you got faith in the wrong person. Right. You got no. faith in the wrong person. Hey. Bring it up. The, your, your Lord and Savior, there's no nation on this earth that has 
a savior that looks like their slave master. Right. Right. I'm not. I well, never believe it. Never said right with me. Okay, but look, sister, who taught you that you could dress like that? I just put it on because it's coming. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's, Nobody taught me. Yeah, the, the television I'm, has taught you, I'm sister. I'm a trend seller. I set my own trend. So, so everybody wear Air Maxes. All the, huh? I just put them on. They my grandson. They comfortable. All the, right look, there. that sister right there, she got on the same kind of pants you got on right there. She got the same kind of hair that you got right there. Y'all got the same slit down the middle with the same brown going down the side. You're not setting no trends, sister. Right. You ain't, we, ain't, we ain't no foolish men now. We ain't no foolish men. You got the faith in the works? Yes, sir. Bring this up. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, uh -huh. and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. So, so you can't say that you got faith in Christ, but you don't have the works of Christ. And what are the works of Christ? I think the works of Christ is um, giving 10% of your time, anything. The tithing. Anything, right. The tithing. So we is thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect you see that my sister the scripture says by works your faith is made perfect give me uh second peter 1 and 21. right so my sister right here so you say that you believe on the lord this is what the scripture says that it means to believe on christ belief isn't just faith belief is the action that proves your faith that's right what's your career sister I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. Did you have to get a certification? Okay, what what steps did you take to get that certification? So I had to go to school first. You had to go to school, right? Yeah. And apply yourself. That's the works, my sister. So you say you believe in Christ. Now you must apply the things that Christ applied. You must follow the example that Christ set. Christ didn't go to church on Sunday. Christ didn't eat crabs. Christ didn't celebrate Christmas. Right, right. Christ didn't have a cookout on July 4th. Right. So if you're doing all those things, you're not following Christ. You say that you have faith, but you don't have the works. That's what we're out here to teach our brothers and sisters, that you must repent from your dead works. That's right. You must repent from your life of sin if you really have faith in God. Check this out. Teach. The book of Sirach, chapter yeah, 32 and verse 24. Uh -huh. He that believeth in the Lord. So we all say we believe in the Lord. I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what everybody say, but ain't nobody filled with the Holy Ghost that's saying that. Because they don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost still goes back to God's laws. Right? Right. There's no way to escape God's laws. Keep reading that. He that believeth in the Lord, uh -huh. taketh heed to the commandment. So in order for you to believe in the Lord, you must take heed to the commandment. Right. For me to say I believe in Christ, that means I have to stop eating crabs. That's the commandment. For me to take heed to the, com for me to believe in the Lord, I must take heed to keeping the Sabbath day. It means I can't go, right, which is Saturday, which means I can't go shopping on the Sabbath. I can't do no cooking, no cleaning on the Sabbath. It means that I can't go to church on Sunday worshiping this man and skipping over the day that this man ordained for us to rest. Right. Was that it? Read it again. He that believeth in the Lord uh -huh. taketh heed to the commandment. Don't leave yet. Don't leave And yet. he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So you will fare never worse if you trust in the Lord and do his works. These are the works. Keep reading that. The book, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 21. New Testament, my sister. Remember, we, remember the scripture said, He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. Read. For even hereunto were ye called. Uh -huh. So you were called, my sister. I didn't catch your name. Karen, so Karen, you were called. The Spirit of the Lord came on you when you were driving right here to say what they got going on right there. And it allowed you to make a U-turn up there, come here, learn your nationality, and what God requires of you to receive salvation. The Lord wants you to know that what you've been doing thus far will not get you everlasting life. Because the Bible says you must be applying His commandments to get everlasting life. We read that for you in Matthew 19. We read to you Amos 9 that says all the sinners of my people will die by the sword. And my sister, you're still in the midst of sin. So we're here to compel you to come out of your, your life of sin and live a life of righteousness. Right. Verse 21. Uh -huh. For even hereunto were ye called. So Karen, you've been called. Read. 
because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for you, Karen, because you're on that sign right there. You're one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Leaving us an example. Christ left you an example. That ye should follow his steps. So if you have faith in Christ, you must follow in his what? His steps. And what did Christ do? Give me sin. Verse 22. Who did no sin. So you must follow in Christ's steps if you have faith in Christ. And Christ did no sin, my sister. He did no sin. And we used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.